SCP-5000. Gunshots echo down the concrete hallway of Site-22. Screams are the only thing that escape each room. A team of men in all-black combat gear and masks move from one section of the complex to the next. Pietro Wilson hides in his office, listening to the cries for mercy of his colleagues. He shakes uncontrollably with fear. Who are they? He thinks. Why are they killing everyone? And how did they find us? Moments earlier, Pietro Wilson had been in the canteen eating dinner with other staff members. A group of heavily armed men entered the room. They stood silently surveying the area. One of the scientists stood up and asked if they could assist them. That's when the carnage started. One of the masked men raised his rifle and shot the scientist in the head. Chaos broke out as the other mercenaries raised their weapons and began firing. Bullets flew everywhere, and Pietro was lucky not to be struck or trampled as he escaped out the back door of the cafeteria. He ran to his office, slammed the door shut, and hid under his desk. Now he sits on the floor, with his legs pulled up to his chest, shaking uncontrollably. After a couple of minutes, he manages to take a deep breath and slows his heart rate. He regains control of his body, but is still filled with fear and adrenaline. Pietro crawls on his belly to his office door. He reaches up and pulls down on the handle. There's a slight click as the latch releases. He opens the door just a crack and peers out into the hallway. The flickering emergency lights illuminate the corridor for a few seconds at a time before plunging it back into darkness. There is no one in sight, but from around the corner, Flashes of light from machine gun fire flickers down the hall. The screams of the workers at Site-22 are silenced. Pietro takes a deep breath and pushes the door open further. He crawls out of his office and starts moving away from the violence. Unfortunately, to get away from the mayhem, he must go deeper into the bowels of Site-22. The exit is the other way, but he is too scared to head towards the armed men. He stands up and brushes the dirt from his blue technician jumpsuit. The lights flicker off. The hallway goes dark. He reaches out his hands and comes into contact with the cool, damp wall. He feels his way down the corridor, swimming in darkness. After a few moments, the lights flicker back on. Pietro looks over his shoulder to make sure he is still in the clear. Standing at the end of the hall is a soldier dressed in all black with a mask covering his face. The soldier stands motionless. Pietro turns to face the soldier. His eyes open wide. His heart races. He can't breathe. The figure doesn't move. Then the lights flicker out again, and Pietro pushes off the wall and runs, blind in the darkness. He sprints as fast as he can when suddenly, there is a loud crack and a bullet whizzes by his head. He can feel the wind as it barely misses his cheek. He continues to run. The lights flicker back on. He peers over his shoulder. Now there is an entire group of armed men pursuing him down the hallway, guns raised. He turns the corner of the hallway and proceeds down a set of stairs further into Site-22. At the bottom of the stairway, there is a short corridor with a door at the end of it. There is nowhere else to go. He pulls a key card out of his pocket and fumbles it. The card falls to the ground. Pietro bends down to pick it up, and as he leans over, a bullet whizzes past where his head had just been. The projectile embeds itself into the metal door. He scoops his keycard up off the ground and shoves it against the scanner. The door unlocks, and he dashes into the room. He quickly turns and shuts the door. It locks automatically. The last thing he sees is the assassins running towards the door. The lights flicker on in the room where Pietro stands. The room has only one door, no windows and no vents. It is completely isolated. In the middle of the room is SCP-5000. He knew there was an SCP in this room that was designated SCP-5000, but he never knew what it actually was. Here he is now, staring at it. A strange-looking mechanical harness hanging in the middle of the room. Suddenly, loud banging at the door fills the room. The armed men are trying to break in. It is only a matter of time before they pry the door open. With nowhere to go, Pietro Wilson knows that he is dead. He looks at SCP-5000 and shakes his head. What do I have to lose? He says out loud. Only your life. A voice in his head responds. He walks over to SCP-5000 and pulls it down from where it is hanging. It is heavy. On the mechanical suit are symbols he does not recognize. The only thing he knows about the suit are rumors he's heard from others who work at Site-22. Supposedly, it first appeared in a flash of light in the containment chamber of a Keter-level SCP at Site-62C. The designation of this Keter was SCP-579. The only other thing that Pietro knows is that everyone at Site-62C was slaughtered when containment was breached. SCP-5000 was found deactivated next to a pile of bodies. He slips on the harness, and as if it has a life of its own, 
SCP-5000 begins to adjust itself to the exact dimensions of his body. The suit grows and snakes across his skin, wrapping every appendage in armor. Then it begins to tighten. Pietro Wilson starts to scream as SCP-5000 envelops him. The suit rises up the back of his neck and encases his entire head, silencing his screams. The door to the room blasts open from a controlled explosion. As the dust and smoke settles, the masked men enter the room. Their flashlights move from side to side as they search for the elusive technician who had just entered. There is no one in the room. All that is there is an empty rack in the middle of the chamber. The men fan out, but there is no other exit. The room is just a solid square of concrete. They're baffled. Where did he go? One of them shouts. Pietro Wilson had blacked out from the pain of the suit attaching to his body. He comes to, still standing in the middle of the room. All around him are men in black combat gear. They are searching for him. He holds his breath and closes his eyes, but the gunshots never come. He opens one of his eyes and looks around. Why haven't they killed me yet? He thinks. He slowly turns his head as men walk by him with their guns raised. He hears someone say, Where did he go? I'm right here, he thinks. Am I dead? Pietro looks down to see that his entire body is contained within SCP-5000. He lifts his hand and waves it in front of his face. He is still clearly alive, but it seems as if the killers can't see him. He walks up to one of the mercenaries and waves his hand in front of the man's face. There is no reaction. The suit made me invisible, he thinks. Pietro looks at one of the men to see if he can find out who they are and why they have killed everyone at the base. On the sleeve of the man's jacket are the words Zeta-19. He's never heard of Zeta-19 before, but they must be part of an organization that is trying to undermine the SCP Foundation. The men continue to search the empty room, clearly confused as to where the technician went. Pietro weaves his way through the group of men and back out the door he had entered from. On his way through the wreckage that used to be a door, Pietro Wilson trips on some debris. He reaches out to steady himself, but he has fallen. He closes his eyes knowing that as soon as he hits the ground, all of the men hunting him will be alerted by the sound of his fall, but the impact never comes. When Pietro opens his eyes, it is as if he is hovering just above the ground. He looks down at his feet. The toes of the suit are firmly planted on the floor, like powerful magnets on iron. SCP-5000 has prevented his fall and is holding him in place using the feet of the suit only. He reaches out his hand and gently places it on the ground. He pushes himself up to a standing position. He turns to look back into the room. The men are still in there searching for him. Pietro makes his way back through Site-22. He walks by his office and proceeds towards the exit of the facility. As he passes the labs and other rooms at Site-22, all he finds is carnage. Everyone has been killed. An extra bullet has been placed in each person's head to make sure. It seems that the only mission these men were on was to kill everyone and make sure they stay dead. He continues towards the exit of Site-22 that is guarded by two men. As he approaches the two heavily armed men, Pietro makes sure to be as quiet as possible. This is not a difficult task, as the SCP-5000 has given him stealth capabilities. He notices that even his footsteps aren't giving off any sound. It is almost as if the suit is allowing him to glide across the floor. He is almost to the exit, then he will be home free. He takes a deep breath turns sideways, and squeezes past the two men guarding the doorway. Just as he is about to leave this nightmare behind, one of the guards turns unexpectedly. The man's shoulder runs directly into Pietro Wilson, throwing him off balance. He is knocked into the second guard. Both of the men scream. What is that? One of them shouts. They begin to raise their guns on the invisible object that just bumped into them. It's then that SCP-5000 takes over Pietro's body. The suit raises his arm and grabs one of the men by the throat. With a squeeze, the man's larynx is instantly crushed. Then the suit twists slightly and snaps the man's neck. It turns to face the second man. Even the black mask the man is wearing can't hide the look of terror on his face. But Pietro has no control over what SCP-5000 is doing. He has never killed before. The suit launches Pietro's body into the second man, pinning him against the wall. It then grabs the top of the mercenary's head and slams it against the concrete. Again, and again, and again, until the man's screams are silenced. The suit lets go of the man, and his lifeless body slides to the ground as Pietro backs out. When he regains consciousness, he's outside of Site-22, standing on top of a hill, looking down at the facility below. He looks at his hands, then at the rest of his body. He is still contained with an SCP-5000. There is a flash of light, and a heads-up display comes on. He doesn't recognize any of the symbols, but as his eyes move from one area of the screen to the next, the symbols become highlighted. 
Before his eyes, certain symbols began to translate into words he can read. One of the symbols now says, Journal Entry. Unsure of what else to do, Pietro begins recounting what happened to him at Site-22. He makes his way through the desert towards the nearest SCP Foundation safe house. He knows once there, he'll be able to reach out to his superiors for help and further orders. Maybe he can even find a way to get SCP-5000 to release him. As he trudges along, Pietro Wilson notices that his brain is telling him he is thirsty, but the vitals on the suit's heads-up display say that he is in good health. In fact, he is better than good. His vitals are all perfect. The suit seems to be giving him all the nutrients his body needs. It has even fixed his busted knee that was injured back in college playing football. The joint itself has somehow been healed. Pietro finally reaches the safe house and opens the door. It is quiet and dusty. It looks as if no one has been there in years. He walks over to the communication station and tries to contact the foundation, but all he gets is static. He gives up and walks over to the TV. He pushes the on button. The screen hisses to life. What he sees causes his jaw to drop. The world is at war. A war between humans and monsters. Whatever happened at Site-22 also happened at other Foundation sites. The SCPs have been let loose.